One year ago, we made a huge decision to spend our savings on a van renovation. This is what the van looked like when we first purchased it. Our apartment lease was ending soon, so we jumped into the renovations without any experience and completed them in a month. Here's what the van looks like now. Our cabin on wheels is a reflection of the type of home we would like in the future. It houses a small closet, a pull-out fridge, a built-in litter box, and a pull-out dining table. This lifestyle is very different from the apartment life we lived before. And the challenges have been brutal, but we are still in it, which says a lot about our adaptability. So let's go back in time and revisit our year of small wonders and large journeys across North America. We joined van life during the later days of the season, when the rainy days started to deplete and the sun began to emerge. The early days of fun and enjoyment are always the best days. We just wanted to get out there and start this dreamy lifestyle that everyone kept boasting about. We love to hike, so we implemented them into our everyday routine as we did when we lived in a stable home. Being able to be wherever we wanted, when we wanted, while having jobs to support our lifestyle was exactly how we wanted to live. Summer brought very similar feelings that spring gave us. Waking up to chilly breezes from the ocean air, or in a secluded forest filled with birds, butterflies, and, well, ticks too. But we were happy, and we were traveling to our heart's content. It was everything we ever wanted. We dined at popular restaurants, visited beautiful cities in the eastern part of Canada and the U.S., while working full-time remote jobs. We made it work. It was very much worth it. Some things we didn't do, however, was eat out every day. We made sure to utilize the kitchen we have and prepared our own meals 75% of each week. This helped us save on money while also maintaining our health. Van life is expensive, and while we were having so much fun in the beginning, as the months continued, we began decreasing our spending habits. During those first few months of van life, we were also in the process of planning our backyard wedding, another huge finance that needed a lot of attention. It was planned to be an intimate wedding with only 25 people on the guest list. We designed and decorated everything ourselves, and our families helped us put hours of work towards the big day. But unfortunately, a huge hurricane passed through that weekend, forcing us to cancel our wedding and opt for an elopement with most of our guests on video. Yep. It was devastating, especially since we put so much hard work and money towards it. But at the end of the day, 
for us, it is not about the wedding. It's about the marriage. Autumn shifted our perspective on van life. Our plan for the next two seasons was to head to British Columbia for our honeymoon in the mountains. We passed through and visited many landmarks along the way and enjoyed our time together after a stressful wedding weekend. We want to visit as many national parks as we can, and Canada was a great place to start. New face. <laughs> Once we returned back to the States, things started to get much harder for us financially. Around this time, one of our biggest sources of income was taken away. And this led to relying on our smaller income to support the both of us. After so much of our money went towards the van build and the wedding, the money we saved in the spring and summer desperately needed to be maintained. So we adapted to a more frugal lifestyle and started to travel slow. But we still wanted to travel in the order that we planned, so we didn't have to keep going back and forth, which would have wasted a lot of gas. We stayed in Washington for a month, then traveled down to Oregon for the start of winter. This was the first holiday season we spent away from family. We spent Thanksgiving at a campsite in Olympic National Park in Washington, which was a very fun experience. But for Christmas, we wanted something a little more warm and cozy. We decided to rent an Airbnb for a couple of days in Oregon, a cabin in the woods, which was everything we wanted and needed at the time. Being able to slow down and enjoy each other in a stable home brought a sense of comfort, especially since we had been experiencing some major burnout. It was then that we realized van life was turning into more of a financial stepping stone for us while our ultimate goal is to find the perfect stationary home to live in. You know, dasher and dancer and prancer and vixen, comet and cupid and donner and blitzen, what do you recall? The most famous reindeer of all. Leaving the cabin was bittersweet, but it was time to continue traveling south. We headed to California to visit family and notable landmarks for two weeks. We counted down the seconds to the new year and journeyed off to six national parks. As most people know, California is incredibly expensive, so we did not want to stay long. We also couldn't pass up the opportunity to see the amazing wonders the state has.
We eventually settled down in Arizona for almost two months. It was warm, had cheap gas, and reliable job opportunities. Our plan was to stay in Arizona until March and head up to more notable national parks. But our plans were interrupted and we had to drive back 34 hours to our home state on the East Coast. An in-person job opportunity arose for me, and it could not be avoided. We used this opportunity as a reset, so we stayed for the two weeks that were required and were able to visit family in the meantime. We also cleaned out our van of anything we did not need or use, and implemented the same decluttering method towards our storage unit. During this time, we also had to get new tires and the oil changed, probably for the fifth time already, before making another long drive back to the west. Our first year in van life brought so many opportunities and memories, both good and not so good for us. This year has taught us that there are van lifers who travel for the thrill, and there are van lifers who travel slow and enjoy thrills whenever they can. We believe we started as thrill seekers and ended up as slow travelers. Because for us, this will not be a three to five month trip. This is our lifestyle now and there is no rush for us to finish everything in a short amount of time. It is not realistic for us to see and experience a different magical place every day. Rather, it is something we will see when we can. We may not have all the time in the world, but we do have time. But we will be honest with you. We have had many moments where we wanted to quit entirely, and we have gotten close. The buildup of stress because of the lack of normalcy can be tiring. Moving to a new spot every day, charging our battery, limited space, breakdowns and maintenance have all taken a huge toll on us. But despite all the challenges, we stay for the solitude that being on the road brings. It is much easier and affordable for us to switch up the pace and live life on our own terms with van life than it ever was when we lived in the city. At the end of the day, we have less bills and remind ourselves that we don't have to pay for rent or water and electricity like we did in the city. Being able to avoid the city and wake up in different backyards with various beautiful views, Meeting new people, slowing down, and overall enjoying life from this point of view is incomparable. 
these days we have fully adapted to a slower living and enjoy each destination we travel to for a couple weeks to a month at a time. Some of the reasons for this is because of in-person work opportunities, saving on gas, and avoiding burnout, which we realize is stimulated when we travel quickly. We are going into our second year of family, and this year we are going about it differently. It wasn't until the end of the first year that we realized we needed to live a more frugal lifestyle. We will now be practicing this more in our life moving forward, even past van life. <laughs> we are so happy this lifestyle exists and is becoming more and more respected each year. It started as a spontaneous decision, but we fear this year would have been much harder for us if we hadn't decided to try it out. We can't wait to start our second year on the road and we have so many plans to share here with our YouTube community.